So we're in Dublin for Fuse 24. I'm here with Udayan Mukherjee, who's Senior Fellow Network and Edge Group at Intel, and Matt Conrod, who is Global VRAN Business Development Manager at Intel. So thanks very much for joining us today. We're going to be talking about uh, Open RAN. Now, Udayan, I'm going to start with you, uh, because major shifts in uh, technology and business, such as the one from traditional RAN to Open RAN, that's a major undertaking, a major transformation, a really big journey. Where is the industry on that journey and how is the industry performing? Yeah, it's, it's actually a journey, as you said. I mean, we first implemented um, a VRAN, Open RAN version, back in 2018, started LTE in Japan, you know, and then moved to 5G and others. So every incremental step of the way, we are improving the technologies, you know, the platform, silicon, software, and the platform, and then the overall TCO aspects of it. Where is going right now, you see a lot of announcement today, you know, and before as well. Every major vendor, every operator has an open and plan now. Every one of these elements that is getting there, the technologies are getting perfected. And remember where it came from, it was a black box. You can't just switch it on, it's a black box with one vendor controlling all the stack. Now you have DU, you have CU, you have CAS and PAS, uh, multiple different vendors supporting to this. You know, you have a whole ecosystem going up. It took some time, but the journey has already started and there is no stopping back. Absolutely. And, and Matt, from your perspective, how do you see things developing? Do you, do you get a sense of acceleration in the open round space? Well, I would say the one thing that has happened is uh, there's a shared vision in the industry. I think there's a, it's undeniable. I talked to many operators around the world. Uh, open and virtualized networks is the future. Uh, some operators like Verizon and Vodafone are early adopters. They have the technology deployed. And for those guys that have, those operators that haven't scaled yet, there are better and better practices and better and better solutions emerging. So the, the journey for those that haven't done it yet is, uh, is improving you know, with, every, with every deployment, with every year. Um, but it is a journey. And, uh, but I would say that the vision is aligned. Uh, also, we've demonstrated in cities like New York that virtualized RAN implementation with an open radio interface compete, can compete with the best traditional baseband in the world in terms of performance. Uh, so it, now it's just a matter of time of you know, the op global operator community doing the scale implementation. And every operator has their own timeline for introducing technology and technology risks. Uh, but we do have some early adoption and it's very exciting to see these uh, add up, uh, you know, good, good early start and we need more to happen. Okay. Um, now you mentioned uh, TCO there and that is obviously one of the Big talking points the whole time, and there are still questions being asked around TCO related to uh, Open RAN, and with reports saying that operators are questioning the value of Open RAN. Um, you know, is that a, a fair accusation, a fair question, Matt? Yeah, I think it is a it is a fair question. We we've come a long way on TCO. Firstly, every generation of Intel Silicon and implementation of VRAN has improved with respect to TCO. You know, we started with an external fixed function accelerator and a PCIe PCIe card. Then we integrated it on die with our Sapphire Rapids EE CPU. In the GNR timeframe, we're integrating NIC Silicon. You know, all these steps have uh, greatly improved the TCO, and we're going to continue. So it gets better over time. Um, I think one of the challenges that I'm seeing right now on global open RAN RFPs is uh, our ability or the, the traditional telco procurement team's ability to quantify the benefits of the technology. You know, the ability in a hardware software disaggregated platform, it is easier or should be easier to automate. And it's difficult to quantify that benefit in these TCO calculators. Uh, likewise, integrating another function other than VDU on the same server as, uh, as the video, like a, a virtual routing function, as an example. That's another more, more advanced concept. It's future, it's a little bit more challenging to quantify. Upgradability to AI and 6G are other examples. Um, but I would say that we've gotten a lot better. Uh, this, the TCO challenge and question will continue to come up. Uh, and if I had any advice for the telecom community is, you know, challenge your team to quantify the benefits of the technology, the future benefits of the technology, and uh, you'll start seeing these TCOs uh, converge 
between traditional RAN and open RAN. And Urian, how do you see this developing? I mean, from a technology perspective, is the TCO constantly improving? Right. Any workload, when you have a software-defined workload is virtualized in a platform, it opens up the opportunities for a lot more things then. Like for a given example, you used to have those cell site, those um, virtual routers, used to be a standalone equipment along with a DU. Now, if it's a software defined aspects of it, the routing function you can integrate in the platform itself. And a lot of companies are started looking into it seriously. You know? So there you go, another $5,000, $10,000 worth of box. You can just put in because it's a pure software. In future, look into this. We talk about a lot of AI aspects of it. The moment you have a software defined aspects of this, you can add, so MIMO, channel estimation. If somebody come create a much better function, you can slide that in into these functions and operators are going to demand it. So it opens up a whole bunch of innovation that actually translates to better TCO in longer term, you know. But in the shorter term, I mean, um, the um, capital outlay is a key element of it and something that Matt talked about that we are constantly innovating. We are adding more cores in the same power footprint. So adding more cores into means more number of cells I can actually accommodate into that. So single server is important. So I think that's the way we are contributing to this. Okay. Now, uh, Matt mentioned uh, AI there before, and of course there isn't a conversation to be had in this industry right now, or pretty much any industry without talking about AI. Uh, but, and of course, uh, AI is going to play a really important role in Open RAN and across telecom in general. What are your thoughts about AI in the RAM? What a kind of impact is the uh, implementation of AI applications in the radio access network going to have? Yeah, um, the Gen AI part of it is recent, but the AI is not um, recent. I mean, machine learning aspects were there for a long time. And we are taking a holistic view. We are taking from what is it going to do in platform, whether it's in DU and CU in software, and then overall what you can do in the, in the operation side of it. So take an example on the, the platform. Intel Silicon has a lot of the hooks in the power management. C state, we call it sleep state. P state, where you can actually do frequency changes and save power. What if this tracks the actual workload? Your DU workload, if you look at the TTI, I mean, there's a lot of times there is not much is happening. Why am I burning power in this? So AI is a perfect um, uh, application. This thing is dynamically tracking the workload and actually reducing the power as we can. You know? And then you see the right now, this is the number one thing that every operator is looking into. So we already implemented that. We showed that in MWC you know, earlier this year. Then if you go up in the DU rank, in the digital unit, the layer one, layer two, I talked about MIMO channel estimation. A lot of innovations are actually being looked into. How do you do beam management? 3GPP talks about beam management and a couple of other use cases. We are implementing those. Now you have a software even virtualized platform, you can do a whole bunch of stuff. So your companies like IRAs of the world are innovating, you know, startup companies looking. Then you have this platform, what you do, put a Gen AI on top of it to actually do a lot of these diagnostics. In future, like for example, when you do the operations side of it, you can have a, some people call it co-pilot for operations. So this is where Gen AI comes into play. So every layer of the stack, we are looking seriously into what AI can do. But the thing, um, one of the most important things is that, why am I using that AI? Is it either has to improve the KPI, spectrum utilization, or improving the, um, the uplink or downlink, or it is simplifying it. Just for the sake of AI, is not, so people are asking questions that, okay, is it going to increase my power for, um, uh, burning? Yes, yeah, so what benefit I'm going to get out of it? So we have to show those aspects of it. Sure. So we have, that journey has started. Uh, and Matt, from a business perspective, are, are customers getting excited about how AI might further improve the, the, the KPIs? Well, absolutely. I think in, you know, the industry is a little bit um, uh, caught up in marketing of AI. You know, there, there's a, a lot of noise around the possibilities of Gen AI and ML AI for RAN uh, and Telco. And so, but if we park the marketing for a second, uh, I think if we can improve spectral efficiency or if we can reduce power consumption, uh, even you know, maybe look at capacity optimization, a certain amount of capacity on fewer cores. You know, if we can touch those TCO levers with the AI assist, uh, then we should pay attention. Not only should we pay attention, we should invest resources on innovating, piloting. Uh, I think the underlying, the underlying 
Um, you know, we must keep, we, we must make sure we don't forget the TCO. Uh, VRAN, especially in a distributed RAN uh, location, has a certain power envelope in a certain space and a certain amount of cooling needs as well as a certain cost structure. And if we bring AI at such an expense that it blows up that that, e that environment where you deploy a DRAN server, then it may not be worth it. So innovation in this area should be done with TCO in mind day one. The last thing we need to do is have a full forklift change out of all the RAN uh, with, with limited improvement in, uh, in uh, you know, whether it's spectral efficiency or power saving. So, you know, let's innovate, but let's do it with TCO in mind. Absolutely. Now, I mean, the, the whole transformation that the telecom operators are going through, it's a tough one. Um, you know, people, processes, tools, all of these eat up resources, and there might be a temptation for some operators to hold off, you know, wait and see. Um, but of course, the danger then is that you miss out on the benefits. What would be your advice to operators that are considering not investing now uh, and therefore maybe not getting the benefits as, as soon as others? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, uh, what we're seeing in the market is um, there are learnings going on. So if you haven't started the virtual and open RAN journey yet, talk to people that have. You know, being a fast follower, a second adopter, you have an opportunity to obtain a tremendous amount of knowledge that's been learned the hard way. Uh, talk to the ecosystem that have deployed at scale. Talk to other operators that have, you know, deployed at scale and fast track your own, you know, your own journey. Uh, secondly, you know, most organizations learn when they have hands-on experience. So get to pilots, get to deployments in the field and bring in the operations team. Don't let engineers manage these pilots, make the operations guys manage the pilots and that will force the learning to start. The people process tools you mentioned, you need to start that. And then I would say lastly, there's every two years Intel comes up with a new x86 piece of silicon. There's new technology being driven by the hyperscaler community. It's, it's fat, it's rapid. But my recommendation to the telecom community is not wait. There's, all, there's a risk that you're always waiting for a better widget. And you can take advantage of future technologies, but you need to, this, you need to start. So start small, start with today's technology. By the time you're ready to scale, there will be a better product, yes. But that start needs to happen and do it early. Okay, Matt, well, that sounds like uh, sound advice uh, for the industry. So thanks very much for joining us today, both of you. And enjoy the rest of the show. Thank you. Thank you.